So once again, welcome to everybody. Uh, as we gather together and we celebrate the resurrection, uh, it is important for us to recognize and understand that our faith isn't just a philosophical system of thought, right? It is actually based in history, that our faith comes to us through God's action in history, that we see it from creation itself through the exodus from Egypt to the Babylonian exile to the Roman occupation and Jesus' birth his suffering, his death, his resurrection, his ascension, and the sending of the Holy Spirit, and how the church then grew after that moment. So we are an historic religion, or an historic faith, right? And that's part of how God has worked in time and space to bring us to salvation. It's what we call salvation history, right? And so we are here as we come to recognize the event of the resurrection of Jesus, the historic event of the resurrection of Jesus, but it is found nowhere in any of the Gospels. There's no account of the resurrection itself. There's evidence for the resurrection. There's messengers that talk about the resurrection. There is a risen Jesus who is observed and interacted with, but there's no historic moment recorded in the scriptures about the resurrection itself. In some ways, it remains veiled to us. It remains in mystery. It invites us into faith, not proof or knowledge, right? It invites us to trust in God. This year, and some of you have heard this before, but this year I read a book that was called A Million Miles in a Thousand Years by Donald Miller. And he was writing this book because a previous memoir that he had was being made into a movie. And so he had to help work with the producers to create a story, because these were just separate essays in the memoir, to create a story that people would want to watch on the screen. And so he kind of goes through in this book how he uh, begins to understand a story and how he learns about what a story is. And eventually he defines a story as a character who desires something and overcomes conflict to get it. So a character who desires something and overcomes conflict to get it. And they, they ended up writing a movie, and it was produced into a movie. Uh, but this really, as he was going through that, this book is about how he recognized his own life was kind of boring, right? His own life was not a good story, that, that we are the authors of our lives. And he went on a journey to try to expand his horizons, have a more important purpose, to move beyond himself in some ways, to have more adventure and a fuller life in this book. As we come here today, we will, in just a moment, we will renew our baptismal promises. And in the renewal of our baptismal promises, and as we celebrate the resurrection, it's the invitation to each of us to start a better story with our lives, to be open not just to our own drama, our own story, but to God's drama, to God's story. It's what Bishop Robert Barron calls moving from the ego drama to the theo drama, to God's story, that our horizons are expanded, that, that all of history is changed in the person of Jesus Christ in the event of his resurrection, that everything before has altered, that it's the defining moment of God's victory over sin and death, and he invites us into that broader story through the gift of our baptism, that we, when we renew those promises, we're invited to be in a wider horizon, to have a deeper meaning and purpose for our lives. Now, I'm also going to share another story some of you have heard before, uh, but in my life, there have been probably hundreds, if not thousands, of moments of grace. I'm not going to talk about them all. <laughs> I heard the collective sigh of relief, yes. Hundreds, at least, moments of God's grace where my relationship with God changed and shifted, where there was some new insight or new depth that there was some way that God was working in my heart to change me, to work on me as well. And so even though we are a, an historic religion, we're also a personal faith, a personal religion, that each of us are invited into a relationship, not just into a set of beliefs or a set of history facts, but into a relationship with Jesus Christ. And his resurrection from the dead invites us today into that relationship for this to be a moment of grace for us. When I was in high school, I had the opportunity to go as a cultural exchange student to Japan. 
So I spent six weeks during the summer after my junior year on the island of Shikoku outside of the city of Matsuyama, though it's about a million people. And we were up in the mountains there in a bend in the road, and there were just three houses in that bend in the road, and that's where I spent with the family I was with my six weeks in Japan. And I could get out from there on a bike and ride through the mountains, and so I did that quite a bit. And as I would go exploring, I would find different uh, really Shinto shrines or Buddhist temples and kind of go and explore those things. Now, if you're like me in high school, you may have had some doubts or some questions about your faith. And so I was in that spot and I was influenced by this experience to really come back from Japan with an idea of God as an impersonal force. Now, the first movie I ever saw was Star Wars in a drive-in theater. And it was kind of like that idea. Like there is this mystical force that's out there that you can utilize, we can utilize to make our lives better, right? That there's something that can benefit us by tapping into this force. And then when I got home, later in my senior year, I went on my senior retreat at Holy Cross High School. And sometimes they still do this on retreats, but they invited our parents to write letters. My mom and dad had been divorced when I was seven years old, and they asked my dad to write a letter, and then they don't do this anymore, I don't think, but they read some of those letters out loud. And they came to reading my letter from my dad out loud. I was terrified. I scared to death of what all my, my friends were going to do, if they were going to ostracize me or make fun of me. I had no idea what was going to be in that letter. Uh, we didn't, my dad and I at the time did not have a very close relationship. And so I, I, was, I was scared and worried and anxious in that moment. And they read the letter. And in the letter, my dad said two things to me that he had never said at that point in my life in person. The first is that he apologized for the divorce. And the second was that he was proud of me. And at that moment, with all my anxiety, I started bawling, just crying, right? Worried about still what all my classmates would say or think, and, and I, I just, but I couldn't help myself. And my classmates didn't make fun of me. Some of them came over, put their hands on my shoulder, offered me words of encouragement and acceptance, and really through them, in a very real way, I experienced the love of God for me. I encountered Jesus Christ through their care and their compassion. And later that evening, I was out walking and, and I thought, you know, if, I, if God is love, and God is love, but if God is love, then God needs to be a person because only a person can love. It's not an impersonal force that's out there. It is a person that we develop a relationship with, which got me thinking, differently opening my heart to the mystery of that relationship, of beginning to walk with him. As we renew our own baptismal promises today, that's the invitation. It's not just about the historic event, and it's not just about a system of thought. It's about a relationship that we enter into, a love relationship with the God who's made us and who has redeemed us in Jesus Christ. And so we come here with open hearts, celebrating with joy the resurrection, but recognizing that that pivotal event changed all of history and can change our own lives and history as well. In the gospel account today, Mary Magdala goes to the tomb, but Jesus is not there. She goes and gets the, uh, Peter and the other apostle, and they run to the tomb, and Jesus is not there. They're in search of Jesus, the crucified, but he's not there. He has been raised.